Hello everyone, welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance 1. This is section 4.3 where we talk about stopping times. So first, uh, we will start from example. We have the example we have seen in section in the section 4.2 where we had really like an American put option with this payoff. So basically the strike price of the American put was 5. And so this is the tree that we used in that example, uh, the, different, the different value that the stock price can take. And when we try to press this option, we will use this tree and find that the option value is 1.36 at the beginning. And we have seen from the example in section 4.2 that at the beginning, if the first coin toss results in a tail, then then the owner of the option should really exercise this option, right? Uh, otherwise, they will miss an option, an opportunity to exercise the option at the optimal time. And we have seen that if basically they get the head at the first at the first coin, then they shouldn't exercise. And it makes sense they should not exercise, right? So the stock price is eight, so eight minus five minus five minus eight is negative. So it doesn't make any sense like I said, at this point in time. Just wait, and maybe you'll make money out of this option. And again, if you get to a head, then don't exercise. Let's just the option expire uh, out of the money and don't do anything. No need to exercise. And but if you get a head and then it comes down to a tail, the stock price is now equal to four. So you can actually make one dollar by exercising. So yes, do exercise in this case. And there is no. We don't need to look at this case because as long as you come down here, the really the optimal thing to do is to exercise right away. And so this exercise rule can really be uh, expressed in a form of like a random variable too, right? So we can say basically this is what this is saying. Like if you get like tail tail head or tail tail, then really the optimal time you should exercise is at time one. So that's what's here. That's what this is saying. And this is saying like if you get a head and then a tail, the optimal time you should really exercise is two, at time two. And this plus infinity is telling you that if you get a head and then another head, then you should exercise at time plus infinity, meaning never exercise this option. So this is what this uh, random variable to is telling us. And remember, really, uh, so this is just like a, uh, a recap, recap of like what this exercise rule is telling us, this random variable to. And if you remember what we mean by random variable, we, a random variable actually is just something that takes like an even, like head head, and then assign to it to a number in a real in a, a real number. That's all like a random variable is. In this case, basically we have all these possible events. When you toss the coin uh, two times, you can get head head, head tail, tail tail head, tail tail, and then you assign to it to some number zero, one, two plus infinity. Right? That's what that's what we're seeing here. So really, like this random variable. This function that allows us to move from here to here. That's what that's what this, all this toe is, and we call this toe really a stopping time. So that's exactly what a stopping time is. A stopping time is nothing but a random variable that assign uh, to some event, uh, some number that telling you when is the optimal time to uh, when is the time to exercise the option. Right. This is just what a stopping time is, and why plus infinity stand for never exercise this option uh, yeah so let's go with like a formal definition of this so this is definition 4.3.1 in the book so let's say you have an n binomial model uh, and in this model uh, a stopping time is nothing but a random variable to is nothing but a random variable to that takes value 1 through n right or plus infinity and that satisfies the condition that uh, if you have this basically uh, like a uh, toe for like given like all, all the first n capital n coin tosses then toe for the first n coin tosses plus whatever else comes after it is, is still equal to n so really like the this uh, random variable toe this stopping time really depends only on the first n coin tosses and this happened for whatever happened after the first end coin tosses doesn't matter because the process has been stopped after the first end coin tosses. And this is what it means, right? The stopping occur, 
that if stopping occurs at time n, then the decision is made based only on the information available at time n. Anything after n, it, anything can happen, it doesn't matter at all. Also, uh, whenever we have a, stoch a stochastic process that we call, let's say, yn, we can define really a stopping time, and we have also a stopping time too, then we can define something called a stopping process. And the stopping process is just defined as as this. And, and what this thing means is just basically the minimum between the time n and the random variable to. And so I'll, I'll give a more example of what this means. But for example, if n is equal to 2, and then 2, let's say this is after 2 coin toss, tosses, right? And 2 t t is equal to 1. Now that means like basically why this is just equal to y. Okay, which one is smaller? So I said 1. So 1 is smaller than 2. So this is just y1. So this uh, that's what the stopping process is. And let's look at an example to try to understand really what this is about. For example, if we consider the, the discounted American put option we have seen in the previous example, right? So let's say like this is like basically the value of the American put option. And this process yn is just basically the value of this American put option at each point in time, just discounted to the present. So this is also a stochastic process. And so I'm guessing putting the tree here. So we have seen this tree before. This is the tree for the, this, uh, the American the value of the American put. So then the value of the, the discounted process then will be just this. So basically, if I take, for example, 1.36 and I discount it to the, to the present, so that means I'm discounted by 1 plus r to the power 0. That's just 1.36. Nothing changes there. And this 0 0.4, so if I take 0 0.4 and I discount it to the present, 1 plus r, and I think we have been using r equal to 0 0.25 and this is at time 1 then that's just equal to this uh, 0 0.32 again uh, if we take this one basically at this node we discount by 1 plus r so time 2 time vn time 1 we'll just find that's 0 0.64 so that's all like this tree is about the discounted American put price process, right? The um, put value process. So now if we attach basically a stopping time to it, so we have a stochastic process, yn, that we're seeing here, and we have a stopping time too. So let's use the same stopping time that we have seen before, which was the optimal stopping time, right? So this is the random variable. Then if we consider basically this topic process, which is going to be defined by this, um, it will be equal to this. So let's see where this is coming from. So y, y0, to, and as since this to is using only two coin tosses, so basically this is just y0, right? And that's coming from, ooh, yeah, so we find like this y, y, this thing is just the same thing as y0 here, right? Okay, let's move on. So what about this node? y1 minimum with to, to h. So to h, no matter what to h is either 2 or plus infinity, right? So this is really, uh, to can never be really break greater than uh than one here, so the decimal will be one. So this guy would match exactly, exactly as, as we're seeing here, right? And to h h, this thing um, is just yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. So okay, let's look at this one. Y one blah blah blah. To t. Right, so thirty. If it it can only be one, so this is basically the minimum between one and one. So that's just y one, and this was too much. Okay, exactly. Now this is interesting. So let's look at basically uh, y y two to. So y two to. This is the frozen price. So, and I'm looking at th for example. So for th, uh, this tau is actually equal to th. 
So the toe is equally equal to 1. So this is basically the same thing as 2, 10, 1. So between 1 and 2, the minimum is 1. So that means this is just y1, right? So basically this value here should match the value of y1, y1t. And we can see that y1t, and that's exactly what we're seeing here, right? So that's, that's all there is to it. Um, and we can see why this is called basically a frozen process, right? Because this process was just doing it, it, it own thing. And then suddenly when you apply basically this stopping time, we kind of like this, the process suddenly get frozen at a certain point. And we can see in this case, the process is frozen at this, at this node here. Because we can see after, after this point, the two values are basically equal to the value at this node, right? So the process kind of at this point, starting, starting, up, starting from here, is kind of frozen. So going forward, we always get just this 2.4 for this process. So, or well, we can think of it, this process has been stopped at this point. Uh, and that's what a st uh, stopping time is. And we can also notice something that's kind of interesting. Uh, so the so the discounted American price is actually a super martingale. Uh, and what do we mean by that? So basically, why not that y one of t is equal to two point four, and two point four is actually greater than basically. Let me take the zero point six four here and multiply by the probability of that happening. That's zero point five plus the probability of this guy here. Uh, uh, the value of this guy 2.56 multiplied by 0 0.4 when I do that I will find that this is actually equal to uh, uh, 1.6 right and 1.6 of, of course is less than so basically what we show is that y1 t is actually greater than the expected value of this y at time uh, expected value is actually greater than expected value of y next time period, right? So let's say time period t plus uh, w, which can be head ahead or tail. So this, so basically, as we move forward the next time, we expect like the value to, to, to shrink. So that's why we say like it's a super martingale. But actually now, when I take this process, that is a super martingale, and I use the stopping time tau, notice what happened. It becomes now a martingale. And why is it becoming a martingale? Not like basically, uh, the value today here is 2.4, which is equal to the expected value in the in a in the next period, right? Because the because the next period either I'm 2.4 or is 2.4, so the expected value of this is just basically 2.4, right? Which is the expected value of this process at next time period plus one, yeah. This is say next time period, so it's a martingale. The value in the future. The expected value uh, in the future is equal to just the value today. So that's something that interesting with these stopping times. Uh, okay, let's let's move on. So these are just like a few uh, theorems that are in the book. So optimal sampling uh, theorem, part one. So this is very simple. A martingale stopped at the stopping time is a martingale. Uh, and nothing too deep here. The super martingale stopping at stopping time is a super martingale. A sub martingale stopping at a stopping time is a sub martingale. Uh, I'm not gonna prove this. And so we can say the, the one. So let's let's if we consider x n to be a stochastic process and tau be a stopping time. Then if x n is really a martingale, then uh, this relationship holds. Uh, and I will show very quickly why that that is. And if Xn is a super martingale, then we have this thing holds. And if it's a super martingale, uh, this thing holds. And actually, the proof of this is not too hard. Let's basically look. Let's, for example, look at this property here, right? So if Xn is a super martingale, what does that mean? If Xn is a super martingale, then it means it has a tendency to go up, right? So if n is greater than m, that means basically the expected value of this random variable at time n is expected to be greater than the expected value of this uh, process at time m. 
that's all there is to it. Meaning that it's a super martingale. Uh, it's a sub martingale. I'm sorry. So, sub martingale means the process has a tendency to go up as time passes by, and this is true whenever, even if we replace m by basically n tau, right? Where tau is a stopping time. So maybe it has been stopped before even we reach to time n. So that means the expected value of this random variable at time n can be greater than or equal to uh, the expected value of x and tau. And I believe that's what we ask to show here. So we show that the expected value of xn here is greater than or equal to this guy here. And that's all there is to it. And it's the same thing with a martingale. So a we say like a process is a martingale. If if I have any time n, which is greater than m, I, I expect this to be to stay stable, right? So that means the expected value of this process, which is a martingale at time n, I expect this to be equal to the expected value at time m, right? I don't expect it to drift or do anything crazy like that. And it's the same thing if I replace this m by n stopping toe. And that's where this, is, this thing is coming from. And this one is also very simple, uh, very similar. And yeah, so that's it for stopping times. Thank you very much for watching. And please subscribe, comment, like this video. Uh, I would appreciate that a lot. Thank you.